Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're joining from. Thank you for joining our Wavefront monthly webinar today. I'm Caroline, and before I turn things over to Rick, I just want to take care of a few housekeeping items. So the first thing to know is that we are recording this session, and we will make that available for you afterwards that you can rewatch or that you can share it. Um, another thing to note is that we will be doing a Q&A at the end of the, the demo and the presentation here. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to open up the chat box and to ask your questions and we will answer all of those at the end. And so with that, I'm going to have Rick say hello, make sure we can hear him. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Rick Crowley from VMware. Sounds good. So why don't you take things off? Yeah, so uh, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rick Crowley. I work for VMware. Um, I'm a sales engineer for the Wavefront solution within the VMware uh, stable. And I'm going to take you through a very short presentation and then take you through one or two um, use cases as a demonstration of Wavefront. I think um, we have a chat window open, so if there's any questions you want, um, you can put, post them to the chat and then we'll also pause at the end for any questions uh, and answers at the end. Um, so, uh, why Wavefront? So, Today, we're seeing many, many more applications being developed in an agile process with many more uh, releases, much more velocity in releases, and the use of microservices uh, demanding a much more complex land, uh, landscape for, for releases to be put into. We're also seeing those continuous delivery and DevOps best practices moving into a more mainstream now. And with that comes some real challenges for monitoring and, um, and having a unified view of your entire application stack and really where, where the key performance indicators are, are being affected by that, that distributed application stack. And the reason, the reason why metrics are, are, are useful in that is that you can make those metrics used uh, across that whole application stack, regardless of where those components reside, whether that's on premise or in the cloud or a combination of both, whether it's um, microservices or traditional uh, relational database type applications. Um, and you can take a unified view of that and you can take a snapshot of the, of the health and performance of your application in, in the first pane of glass. So what is Wavefront? Wavefront is software as a service. It's metrics, monitoring, and analytics. So we take uh, metrics from many sources, whether that's uh, cloud-based solutions, whether it's uh, infrastructure, application, or database services. We collect those metrics, we push them into a service in the cloud, and allow you to query a, a database to gather uh, those metrics and display them in different ways, whether that's uh, an instant view of, of a, a metric value, whether it's a time series displayed as a, uh, as a, a chart um, that's a line-based chart or, um, or a, a series of bar charts. We'll let you show those as an instant visualization. We can then allow you to build a dashboard that you can, you can share with different parts of your organization, whether that's the business, whether it's site reliability engineering or platform engineering, or whether it's the developers themselves. So each part of your organization can have a view that is completely tailored to them. So the differentiators for Wavefront are, we have an advanced query driven analytics engine. We have, um, more than 120 uh, functions that we can uh, address against that database, allowing you to build very complex um, queries against that database to show the data exactly how you want it to be shown. Um, we have massive scale and availability. The, the, the solution was built from the ground up to deal with enterprise grade scale and, and performance 
um, at that enterprise. We allow you to customize those dashboards and share them with different parts of your organization. We even allow you to, to, um, to share particular parts of that, that data publicly. And then finally, we allow you to build intelligent alerting. So we allow you to, to put some, some real logic against uh, the alerts that you want to display so that you, you minimize the amount of false alarms that you're getting and provide more proactive monitoring for your, for your specific components and uh, key performance indicators of your application. So there's four easy ways of, of, of sending metrics into Wavefront. The first is that we have a, a number of different methods for collecting data from, uh, from those technologies, whether it's using um, agents that are already there or using our own agents to collect the data uh, from those technologies, whether that's, um, whether that's a database, whether it's an operating system, whether it's part of the web tier, we can collect that data from those agents and push them through a proxy, effectively a gateway, into Wavefront. We can take information out of logs and push the metrics from those logs in, through the proxy into Wavefront. We allow you to, to instrument your own code so you can build your own library of metrics to push through to that proxy. And so you can have some very key um, metrics uh, that are very specific to your application displayed in Wavefront as well. And finally, um, cloud providers such as Amazon and Google, we can take those metrics and ingest them directly into Wavefront from those cloud providers. And it's very important to, to, to note now that we are completely cloud agnostic. We have integrations for Amazon, Google Cloud, Azure, uh, PaaS solutions like Pivotal Cloud Foundry. So we are completely agnostic to those technologies. Uh, a note on, on integrations. We are constantly releasing new integrations. We uh, release integrations at the velocity of between 30 and 50 per quarter. So uh, this is a, a slide that, that should be updated on a, an extremely regular basis. But you can see from this that we have support for many different container technologies, for multiple cloud providers, including VMware Cloud on Amazon uh, Web Services. We have support for hypervisors, uh, including Win Windows, Hyper-V, ESX. Um, we have support for many different types of data stores, whether that's relational databases or database services that are in the cloud. Um, and we also have the ability to take metrics from other monitoring solutions. So if you've already made an investment in a particular uh, application monitoring solution, we can take metrics from that and, and use those to, uh, to, to build a very specific picture of your entire application stack. And as you would expect, we have uh, integrations uh, to the popular alert notification methods such as PagerDuty, Slack, ServiceNow, so that you can integrate this with your, your backend processes, your notification processes, and your incident management. Um, solutions. We have uh, a number of customers in the US and, and also Europe. These are uh, some statements from some of our uh, customers that, uh, that are, have been using Wavefront for many years and are continuing to use Wavefront. Um, I know some of these customers uh, personally, I've spoken to them on a number of occasions. Um, one of the bottom ones on the right hand side uh, are monitoring more than 1.2 million uh, internet devices with Wavefront. It scales hugely. Uh, we have uh, a customer in the US that is, uh, that is using Wavefront to, uh, to service more than 2,000 end users with different dashboards uh, for, for their requirements. Um, we have uh, Space 8 Games there. Um, they're a, a manufacturer or a, a software company that builds uh, games for, for mobile devices. So it's very important for them to, be, uh, to have performant applications for their, for, their, um, for their games and to be able to take 
uh, take revenue from those those platforms. So uh, in-game purchasing is extremely important to them, and they use Wavefront to make sure that not only uh, the underlying infrastructure and the application is available and performant, they also use Wavefront to, to make sure that the transactions are, are timely and, and that uh, the, the, they maintain a, a service to, to their end users. Uh, at different times of the day and in different parts of the world. Their most important day, for example, is, is the Chinese New Year. They've got one of the biggest uh, um, online games in China. So it's very important for them to have the metrics when they need them. Now that was a very brief um, introduction to Wavefront through PowerPoint. What I plan to do now is actually show you um, Wavefront and actually demonstrate a couple of use cases so you understand how Wavefront works. So just bear with me while I swap across. I'll just give a chance for everybody to see my screen here. Okay, so this is Wavefront. And if I click on the tabs on the left hand side, you'll see that we have tiles for integrations. We have a number of integrations, as I've already said, it's growing um, constantly. And you'll see that we have integrations for different web tools, we have integrations for cloud providers, whether that's uh, infrastructure based cloud providers or cloud providers with PaaS offerings or services. We have uh, many different integrations for, for data stores, whether that's a relational database or uh, database soft um, services. We can take metrics from monitoring tools such as Prometheus, uh, Nagios, Zabbix, etc. And as you would expect, we have support for um, many, many operating systems. Um, many of our, our more mature customers make use of their own application instrumentation. So we have support for instrumentation solutions such as StatsD, Node.js, Go, etc. So that you can have very specific metrics being pushed into Wavefront. And as I mentioned earlier on, uh, there are many different integrations for alert notifications. And as you would expect, if, if we need to uh, provide support for enterprise customers, there are plugins for authentication solutions such as ADFS, Opta, etc. Now, what do we actually mean by an integration? Um, it's a method for collecting metrics. So if I pick on uh, Amazon Web Services, for example, you'll see that we provide you with an overview of what our integration is. We provide you with uh, instructions on how to set that up, whether that's actually installing an agent to collect data or whether it's creating a user um, within a particular web uh, provider. We show you a list of the metrics so that you can deter determine which metrics are important to you and which metrics you actually want to white space. And most importantly for, for our newer customers, we provide you with a set of um, dashboards. So we give you pre-configured dashboards, a way of getting started with metrics. And as you can see here for Amazon, there are a number of different dashboards that you can take. Now what we expect you to do with that is use that as a starting point uh, and take the components of each of these dashboards and build your dashboards that are very specific to your application stack. Now I'm actually going to take, take us into one of these dashboards. This is, um, it's a cluster here and you can see that I've got many metrics, um, different graphs with many different um, metrics uh, pub, uh, pushing metrics into them. And you can see that I've got different types of charts based on spark lines. I've got uh, lines here. I've got stack graphs. Every type of graph that you would expect uh, to be able to display, I can do that on here. If I go back to the top, I can very quickly switch uh, between the different parts of, 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 of the dashboard. So I can switch from the app servers to uh, the CPU, and it builds these, these charts on demand. So as I move down and go to different parts of the dashboard, you can see that we build these charts on demand. 
Now what I can do here is I can now zoom in on a particular area. So I can build the chart and I can go into a very specific area. Now it's very important to, to uh, mention here that this is as granular as you collect the data. We do not append data, we don't roll the data up, and we certainly don't archive the data. So you can go back a year, two years, and you can have exactly the same granularity that you see now. So you can see that I can zoom in even further and go down to a very granular level. Now what I can also do is make sure that all the charts are in exactly the same state now. So I'm measuring or viewing the charts um, in exactly the same, same time scales that I'm seeing here. You can also see that as I go to different charts, I can see a pop-up and I can get details of each of these lines in here. And if I want to, I can highlight the line and the lines that I highlight will be highlighted on all the other charts. So it's very easy to maneuver around the dashboard, see these da the data, um, and, and make use of it. Now I'm going to go into a very particular use case here. So um, I'm going to have my application. And as you can see, it's very similar to, um, to the dashboard you saw before. I've got some overall stats. So I've got some KPIs that are, are rolled up from many metrics uh, within the dashboard. If I go down to the processes, I can see that I've got, uh, when it builds, I've got uh, the number of processes, the number of threads in here. So I can do exactly what I did before. I can highlight a particular line and, and see what's going on there. If I go back to the top, you can see that I've got some, some variables here, so I can switch between application servers, availability zones, so I can very easily switch my dimensions making use of variables. Now you can see that I've actually, I'm have actually i actually in a, a, an error condition here, so you can see on, on the right-hand side of the top left-hand chart that I'm in an error situation, and I've got uh, an error that, that means that my transaction rates are too low. So my KPI is around transactions per second, and it's dropped quite significantly. Now what I actually want to do is I want to quickly triage this. You can see I've got a lot of information here, but, but it, to me it looks normal, apart from one chart that's shown, shown that, um, that I'm in an error condition. So the first dimension I want to change this to is to see which customers are being affected in this case. So by making use of variables, I can change this chart to see which customers are being affected by this, this performance degradation. And unluckily enough, all of my customers are being affected by the same problem. So now I need to work out if it's uh, infrastructure related. So I'm going to take a look at the same chart so using the same metrics but by application server. Now I can see that there's one application server that, that's dropped quite significantly. It's application server five, so now I know that I've got a problem with that particular server. So if I look on the right hand side, I've got many, many metrics that are feeding this chart on the right hand side for application server five, and it still looks fairly normal to me. We expect charts to go up and down, so I, I'm not quite sure what the issue is here. So what I can do here is I can correlate all of these metrics against the shape on the chart on the left-hand side. So if I move this and correlate against that transaction count, I'm only going to show now the, the metrics that are correlating against that, the chart on the left. Now I can see a much clearer picture. I can see now that... Um, my free memory is dropping quite rapidly, but I can also see that the error count in my log is going up and also my garbage collection is going up. So my garbage count seems to be going up and causing the free memory to disappear quite quickly on that particular application server. So what I can do with that is I can take this short URL, I can append this to the incident, I can send this to the developers, uh, or the site reliability engineering team, and they will be able to open um, this dashboard up in this context and immediately see what I'm seeing. So I've quickly triaged uh, quite a, uh, uh, a serious uh, situation and, and got through a lot of metrics to get to a problem very quickly. 
Now what I can do after that is I can decide that I don't want this to happen again, so I can use this correlation as a condition to generate um, an alert and then move on. So you can turn this into an iterative um, process and start creating some very smart alerts based on, on your experiences with the, with the metrics. Now what I'm going to do is go to a, a, another use case, but a very simple use case here. And it's a, um, just CPU load um, across a whole server farm. And you can see here that at 2.15 in the morning, I've got an event where the developers have pushed some code out to, uh, to my server farm. So at 2.15, they deployed some new code. And after that, it looks like that something happened to my whole server estate. It looks like it got a bit busier, but I can't really tell. Um, I can see that it looks a bit busier, but it still looks fairly normal to me. So if I go into the chart below and show you how we feed the metrics, but also how we get to uh, understand if this is an anomaly or not. Let's let this load. Okay, so you can see we're building the chart uh, on demand. And the chart is being built by this particular metric. So CPU load average over one minute. And you can see that I'm taking that metric from all my sources. So there are a huge amount of sources here in my, in my server farm. And as we can see, there's a lot of me metrics there. And it does actually look like something's happened. But it still looks fairly normal. And it might be the case that, that uh, it, it's normal activity. So the first thing I want to do is actually run a, a function against that metric to average that out across my whole server farm. So by putting average in front of my query, now I can see one single line and it looks fairly co consistent that I've got quite a, a, a significant increase in CPU, CPU utilization after that point. Again, that might be normal activity. That might be the uh, the result of a security scan that happens every night. Uh, or it might be a traditional batch job that gets submitted to all of my servers that generates uh, uh, an increased uh, load. So I want to check this against the previous day. So the next um, query that you can see down here, I'm using the query builder. So part of Wavefront is for you to be able to learn how to build these queries. So we have a query builder that guides you through that. But you can see here that I'm using the same metric again, so CPU load average for a minute. I'm still using the same function to average that across my whole estate. But this time I've added lag, and I've added lag for one day. So if I make this query active, you'll see that now I've got two lines on my chart. And the blue line is, is today's activity, and the orange, light is, orange line is, is lag by one day. Now I can see clearly that there is a problem with this, that the, normally the, the whole of the server farm stays pretty constant, but after that code deploy, I've had quite a significant increase. So as before, I can take a short URL and I can send that to that development team and tell them quite clearly that they've caused a problem with that code release. Now if I just go back, Just to make sure they understand just how upset I am with them, I've created what we call a spark line. So it's just a different way of displaying the same information that states that they've created a 37% increase in, in, in CPU utilization after their code push. And then just go, going to alerts, you can see that we can generate alerts pretty much on any condition. So if I, if I click on uh, an alert here, you can see that we make use of uh, a condition and you can set multiple conditions up and, and then you can decide what severity you want that, whether it's information, smoke, warning or severe. And you can choose what type of target you actually want to send that to, whether that's via email, whether that's integration to ServiceNow or PagerDuty or something like that. But it's a way of creating some very smart alerts on there.
So just going back to integrations, I'll finish there. And I shall now switch back to the slide deck. And ask if there's any any questions in the room at all. So uh, I've got a question in the in the chat window. Yes, um, how long does it take to get started with Wavefront, and and do we offer a free trial? And um, I'll take us to the next screen so you can uh, take a note of this. We do. We have a free trial. Um, it's a thirty day trial. You have full access to Wavefront, so you can uh, use Wavefront to connect to any of your uh, sources, whether it's a cloud provider or infrastructure sources. You have that for 30 days. Within that, there are tours that, that gets you started to take you through some very specific use cases around adding an integration, creating your first chart and your first queries, all the way through to um, building building a, a, a dashboard. Um, because of the uh, query language and the query builder, it's very easy to get started with Wavefront. And within, within an hour, we expect you to have your first set of metrics in there. We expect you to, uh, to have built your own queries to get information out. So you can get started with Wavefront in a matter of hours and actually get something very mean, meaningful out of Wavefront. After that, we see many of our customers then push that out to their community internally, and the adoption rate seems to get very fast and very large. So um, it's something that you can allow different types of end users to adopt and make use of and to build their own uh, dashboards. Um, and with that, I'll leave you with the, with the resources there, uh, wavefront.com, and in there there's a button for you to, um, to start a self-service trial. Um, once you start that trial, we'll be on the phone to you to, to make sure that everything's going as you expect it and to offer our support in any way we need. Um, but with that, oh, there's another question, bear with me. Um, there's a question about how long we keep the data for. Um, right now we don't um, archive any data and as I mentioned before that data it never gets rolled up so when you have Wavefront data it is as granular as you collect it so whenever you run these uh, queries and build a chart that chart provides you with, with uh, exactly the same granularity of data as it was collected. And uh, we have customers that are, have been with us for more than three years and, and still uh, able to, to reference back to that original data from more than three years ago. And with that, I would uh, like to thank you all for your time. Uh, I hope you found it informative. And uh, as I say, if you want to uh, use it and find out, find, find out what your own um, application stack looks like metrics wise, then please go ahead and, and start that trial. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rick. And thank you everyone else for joining. Um, we will end things and give you a couple more minutes back to your day. And I will be sending out a copy of the recording to everyone who joined. Um, so you can rewatch um, and visit us at wavefront.com slash sign up and you can try Wavefront today. So thank you everyone and enjoy the rest of your days. Bye. -bye.